Good morning. Thanks for tuning in to my channel. I do appreciate it. Kind of a noisy section of the Puget Sound, but this little section of beach can hold some sea run cutthroats, so I thought I'd start right here today. Looking forward to seeing if I can get into one of these very unique and really quite rare trout. I'll show you what I'm using. Today I'm using my Sage six weight foundation with Lamson Remix Reel, and I've got the Leland Popper on this morning and hope that I can get one of my first sea run cutthroats on a popper. I've caught a lot of sea run cutthroats in my life, but never one on a popper, so I'm looking forward to getting one on this awesome looking popper. All right, let's go see if we can catch a fish. Let's do this, fish on. That goose is not necessarily excited that I'm here. Sorry, buddy. Saw that right here. There we go, fish on. Oh, 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 I lost it. Dang it. Oh, dang it. Finally hooked into one. Man, you don't know how much work goes into this. This is probably one of the most challenging fisheries out here. And to hook one and to have it come off, that's, ugh, I guess that's fishing. Let's see if we can uh, hook another one. <laughs> well, I had one fish on. Not a big one, but these can get pretty large out here, like any typical cutthroat. Way back when, I caught some really beautiful cutthroat out of the Puget Sound. And hopefully, I'll get into another one today. And if not, maybe the next. But I'm gonna switch beaches. Uh, I'm gonna head over uh, to another favorite spot. It's, uh, it'll be obvious when I'm there. It's uh, under the Narrows. So I'm gonna see if there's any fish over there while I still have a little bit of tide, so. Let's get back in the car and head to the new beach. All right, we'll see you there. Beach number two. Well, now that I'm safely back in the warmth of my car, let me tell you a little bit about the gear I chose and why. So I showed you before, I have a six weight, which really is enough for fishing this particular fishery. A lot of times you wanna have that little bit of extra weight in a six weight and something perhaps a little faster action because a lot of times you're casting into the wind and you need a rod that can deliver a little more of a punch. I use a floating line, specifically, a shooting head. The reason why I use a shooting head is because you don't want to do a lot of false casting when you're on a beach. Otherwise, you're going to be leaving the fly behind you on the rocks most of the time. So typically, I'll make one false cast 
and the floating line has such a strong shooting head it just t carries the line 60 to 70 feet out with very little effort once i get that shooting head beyond the tip of the rod so that is the line i use when i'm doing this particular type of fishing i use just a typical 2x seven and a half foot tapered leader why only seven and a half foot because typically when you have a little bit longer leaders you're gonna have a tendency to snag the rocks behind you because you just get that little bit of play, that little slack that happens with the longer leaders. So I choose to use the shorter leaders on my floating line setup. Typically, I just wear my boots. I have found that I used to get all wadered up and wading out there and realized, you know, with all that effort, and then you gotta clean the waders off because you've got salt water. A lot of times, I'm no more than six or seven feet from shore. So I decided to just start wearing my boots, and as long as I don't forget that I'm wearing boots and step too deep, I don't have to worry about taking it over the top of the boot. But a lot of times that three or four extra feet of wading out into the water doesn't really do much for me when it comes to getting out to where the fish might be. So most of the time, I use my boots. Sometimes I'll use my waders uh, depending on what type of beach that I have. If I've got a pretty steep beach, a lot of times it's just the boots. It just makes it makes it easier. I have a stripping basket, as you can see here. I do have a hard-sided stripping basket and recently picked up this really styrofoam, soft-sided stripping basket, and I really like this, this particular basket. One, it attaches with Velcro, so it's super easy to take on and off, and it feels lightweight. You can barely even tell that it's on. And typically, when you're stripping line like I'm doing here, you'll bang your hand on, on the stripping basket. When it's a hard stripping basket, that hurts when, when you hit something hard. You don't feel it at all with this soft-sided one. So I do like that. I have a Sims sling pack. It is waterproof because typically, even on dry days, stuff is just gonna get wet, a wave hits you, whatever else. I just like to keep the stuff inside my bag completely dry. So I have a waterproof pack that I use for this fishery. I also have a selection of flies, a lot of bait fish flies. I just started using the poppers and hooked one today on a popper, which was kind of cool. But I have a lot of closure minnows, smaller bait fish patterns, tube flies, which I do enjoy using those as well. So those are kind of the selection of flies that I have for this fishery. Uh, I do bring a net and I have a nice magnetic catch. Uh, it's always right next to me, so I typically don't have to worry about it falling off. Um, but it really is, it really makes it easy to take it on and off with this magnetic catch. I also use a stripping guard. I use the stripping guard because typically when you're saltwater fishing and you're stripping in line all the time, it's really easy to start cutting into your fingers unless you have something to protect your fingers when you're pulling in that line that's all covered in salt. All right, everybody, well, I appreciate you joining me on this trip. Trip number two for Sea Run Cutthroat. I'll catch one. I'll get one in the net. I had one on, so getting closer. And hey, if you want to really talk about the different type of setups there are for this type of fishery, I talked to the expert in the fly shop about just this, Sea Run Cutthroat Fishing. So check out this video right here and you'll learn about fishing for Sea Run Cuts. All right, everybody, until the next time, fish on.